the forehead of your robot. Why? I really don't know what to say anymore. I cannot get this story out of my head. This demented VHS tape really ruined my childhood and it was disturbing. You guys know about the show Veggie Tales? It talks about God, and how he is always there for us. One episode taught you that God is bigger than anything. It had good jokes and good humor. But, I do not know what to say about this one lost episode from the show, so I want to get it out of my system by telling it to you guys. Here is the story. Hi my name is Gabriel. I am a huge fan of Veggie Tales. I have all the DVDs, plushies and even all of the merchandise. I always loved the show. The first Veggie Tales episode I watched was called, Are You My Neighbor? Which came out in 1995. It taught me to always love my neighbor. It even came with a silly song called, The Hairbrush Song. I watched all the episodes except for one. Which was called, God Wants Me to Forgive Them. But it turns out, I got a demented copy of the episode. Here is the story. So it was a nice summer day. I was watching the Veggie Tales episode Rack Shack and Benny. Until something popped to my mind. I said to myself. Seems like I've never watched God Wants Me to Forgive Them. Maybe buy it on eBay. So I went to my good friend eBay. Then I searched up the episode. There were no other actual copies until I got to the bottom result. So I clicked on it and it read. Veggie Tales, God Wants Me to Forgive Them, original tape, totally new, totally original. There was only one copy available and it cost $14.99 just for it. I said to myself. Wow, why that much? Oh well, I've never watched this episode anyway. So I clicked add to cart and then I bought it. After I clicked buy, it said. Your delivery will be in 9 weeks. Thank you for your service. I said to myself. 9 weeks? What will I do in the next 9 weeks? As a teen, I am super impatient. So I just waited for my package to arrive. 9 weeks later my parents were going on a date all night. They said they would be back tomorrow morning. Now I have a chance to watch the episode. As soon as they walked out the door, my package finally came. I asked the mailman politely. What took you so long? He said. Budget cuts. Then he walked away. I yelled. What do you mean budget cuts? Thanks to the 90s, I got an old VCR from my basement and then I plugged it in. I then opened up the VHS tape. It looked like it was in very bad condition. It looked like a cardboard box with a printed Google image of the original VHS tape that was glued on it. I thought I got scammed but there was actually a tape in there. But the weird thing was that the print date of this tape was February 8, 1994, which was the day before the actual episode came out, which was February 9, 1994. I said to myself, this might be a beta version of the episode itself. After that, I put the tape inside the VCR. The normal intro started for a few seconds until Bob the Tomato said. Okay Larry, it's time for the theme song. After he said that, the video went black for 5 seconds, then static. So I punched my VCR and I got it working. The theme song was also different. It had the original 1993 theme audio with the 1994 visuals. Anyway the episode started with Bob and Larry standing on the countertop with sad faces. Bob then said in a really sad voice. Hi kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. We have some bad stuff to tell you. Larry just stood there without making any funny jokes or comments. Bob then got a letter from the Lopez family. He read it out loud. Dear Bob and Larry, I'm a mother of four sons. One of them is nine years old and he gets bullied a lot. Someone even called him a stupid little nerd. He was sat for weeks, until one day he had enough of this. He went home crying then went upstairs and locked his door. Then after five minutes, I went to his room then what I saw was horrific. It looks like he grabbed a rope and hung himself. I don't know what to do. He is dead. Can you help me? Signed, Maria Lopez. Bob said. Well, I remember that time when Junior got bullied by a bunch of rapes. Larry then said. Well, let's just play the episode. Bob said. Roll the film. This episode did not seem like Bob or Larry at all. 
Then the episode started with the Grapes of Wrath singing their theme song while driving a rusty old car. However their theme song was very different. Here are the lyrics and it went like this. We are the Grapes of Wrath. We will make your child sad. Even until they are depressed so we'll be so glad. We are the Grapes of Wrath. We like to bully your kid so bad. We'll bully your child until they kill themselves. We are the Grapes of Wrath. I said to myself. Wow those grapes are jerks. They then arrived at Junior's house. Junior was playing with a butterfly. One of the grapes, Paw Grape, then said. Hey Broccoli, what are you doing? Junior then said. I am an asparagus, not a broccoli. Now can you please leave me alone? Tom Grape then said. Well you look like a broccoli you little five year old no one. Junior said in a breaking voice. But... God made me special. I'm not a no one. Rosie Grape then said. You are now. Ha ha. As they laughed at Junior. I expected the Grapes of Wrath to say that Junior had cheese on his head or call him Bean Boy. But this. This is messed up. Junior's eyes then filled with tears. Except that the tears were red. Then he ran inside his house crying. Dad, Dad. Those jerks are bullying me. His father dismissively replied with, Ignore them. Junior then said, That wouldn't work. As he ran in his bedroom crying, his crying was distorted which made it more disturbing. After that, he grabbed a rope from under his bed. He grabbed a stool. Then before he tied the rope, it showed flashbacks of him spending time with his family and having so much fun. I cried a little. Then after he tied the rope, he said, Every kid has his secret sorrows which the world knows not. And oftentimes we call a kid cold when he is only sad. He then put his neck through the rope and let go. He... He hung himself. After that, his father was cooking mac and cheese. Then he was finished, so he yelled. Junior! Lunch is ready! No reply. Then he yelled again. Junior! Your lunch is ready! In a distorted voice. Then his father went upstairs to his bedroom to see what was going on. He saw Junior hanging on the noose with a letter about his depression on a dusty desk. His father then read it and cried. He then cried while he was going downstairs. Then he went to his medicine cabinet and grabbed a bottle of pills. He then said. Losing your child is never a good thing. It is one of the worst things a person can experience in life. Though death happens a lot in life, it's still hard to deal with. Getting through the loss of your child takes time and everyone's journey to healing is unique. Everyone is different and sometimes the journey can see more than we bear. Goodbye. He then opened the pills and put all of them in his mouth. Then he dropped to the floor and passed out. It was so horrible to see, especially for a Christian show. Mom Asparagus then came home at 9 p.m. at night, and she saw that Junior and Dad Asparagus both died. Then she buried them at a cemetery. Then it cuts to Bob, Larry, Laura Carrot, Mom Asparagus, Mr. Lunt and all the other characters gathered around, having a funeral. Then the segment ended. Then it cuts to Bob saying, It's time to talk about what we learned today. But Cordy wasn't working, and the What We Learned Today song wasn't playing. Bob then said. We have learned that depression can hurt us a lot, even until we kill ourselves. We also learned that bullying is a horrible thing to do. Bob and Larry just stood there without saying God made you special and he loves you very much. They just stood there and the episode ended. No credits. No nothing. I would be so glad if it was over, until another segment started. I said. No. 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 I tried to pause but I just wanted to see what happens so I just let it play. The second segment was called, Larry's Lagoon. And it started with Bob, always called Skipper in this segment, and Larry on the ship with the Asparagus Explorers. Then one of the Asparagus Explorers, the millionaire, known as Archibald Asparagus, then said. Entertain us now! Bob then said. Okay. So he just played an entertaining song on the radio. Then the millionaire said at the top of his lungs. Entertain us now for real or else I will slit your throat. 
This was very out of character for the asparagus explorers. Bob then jumped around as entertainment while Larry just stood there doing nothing. One of the asparagus, the millionaire's wife, then said. That's it! As she got a kitchen knife and slit Bob in half. His tomato juice was splattered everywhere. Larry then said. Why? The millionaire asparagus then said. Just drive the boat! Larry then drove the boat. Just like in the original episode, he crashed the boat into the rock. After they crashed, Bob's corpse just went under the water while Larry said. Bob's. The millionaire asparagus then said. Why would you do that you pickle? We will never forgive you! We're stuck here forever you idiot! Go leave now! Larry then said in a crying voice. If you want me to leave, well, I will leave. Goodbye. As he ran into the dark depths of the island, it cut to a time card saying, nine hours later. It cut to Larry sitting on the sand. He then said in a sad voice. What if nobody likes me anymore? I am a nobody to anybody. I caused the ship to crash. I caused everything. I had enough. He then grabbed a kitchen knife and said. So is I, is our only release from this hell? He then slipped his throat and his corpse was shown. His head was dismembered from his body. It then cuts to a time card that says, 10 hours later. It then cuts to the asparagus trying to stay warm with a fire. They were as thin as sticks since they did not eat for 19 hours straight. One of the asparagus, the professor, who is played by Dad Asparagus, then says. What are we gonna eat? There is nothing to eat. The millionaire asparagus then said. Let's eat you. As he bit the professor asparagus, he screamed in pain, as it felt like someone was getting stung by a bee in their eye. Then the millionaire said. <laughs> really? As he took a bite out of another asparagus, his own wife. He then said. You guys taste good? It then cuts to a time card saying, 40 seconds later, as it showed all the corpses of the other asparagus that were eaten. Then the millionaire found a kitchen knife from the asparagus, his wife, that killed Bob. He then said. When you have no friends, you just kill yourself until you are forgotten forever. As he slit his throat. It then showed the corpses of all the vegetables who died, while playing reversed piano music. Then a message in Russian popped up saying, which translates to, Suicide is our only release from this hell we call Earth. Then it just ended, as the tape finally ejects itself from the VCR. I was so scared. I threw the tape out the window. This episode ruined my entire childhood. I couldn't sleep for weeks. Five weeks later, I decided to send an email to Big Idea, the company that makes Veggie Tales. Here is the email Big Idea replied with. To whom it concerns. From Big Idea. Subject, Disturbing Veggie Tales 1994 VHS tape. We are sorry you experienced that. We have nothing to do with something this disturbing or demented that you have described to us. But we understand your worry, so throw out the tape and try to forget about it. And remember, God loves you, and he made you special. I told my parents, my aunt, my uncle, and even my closest friends, but they didn't believe me. Until one day when I was watching the news on TV, and there was a story about a kid named Josh Lopez, who hung himself after getting bullied too much. And the mother's name was Maria Lopez, which was very similar to the episode I watched. It really scared me. I already threw the tape out the window, and I tried to forget about it, but it just would not come out of my mind. It was too disturbing and sad. I took their word, and tried to forget about it for two weeks. But I couldn't do it. So I wanted to forget about it by going to Sky Zone. Then while I was jumping on a trampoline, a note appeared out of nowhere and it read. God loves you, and he made you special.